so today I'll kind of explain to you why, why penile rehab is, is both, both a waste of time and money. And, uh, you know, one thing um, Dr. Shea mentioned is that the incidence of spontaneous erectile function recovery after prostatectomy is about 30 percent. I think really an unrecognized area that we could do a little bit better in the post-radiation um, context as well. You can see here from the PROTECT trial, large randomized study of surgery, observation, and radiation as well, that, that we maybe perhaps underestimate the, the incidence of erectile dysfunction after radiation, and this is a unmet need. So there's a variety of options uh, for penile rehabilitation that have been studied, and I'll kind of take you through those in some type of systematic fashion. We'll talk about scheduled phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors versus placebo, scheduled versus on-demand PDE5 inhibitors, compare them a little bit versus intrauterine prostaglandins, and then we'll talk about some of the other options that are available, including ICI, intracavernosal injection, as well as vacuum erection devices. So we'll start out with PD-5 inhibitors, and um, Dr. Shea um, did run through some of the studies in some type of detail, and you know, I, I give talks, I give a variety of talks, and this one was actually quite straightforward. So what I'm going to present to you is data from a Cochrane review. So Cochrane reviews are considered the gold standard for evaluating a lot of data that exists in healthcare. And I'll just briefly kind of introduce you to these forest plots, and the way this works is we have a line here in the middle, and these kind of include the data from the various studies that address this particular question. You can see here we have the studies that uh, Dr. Shea um, discussed in his talk, and then they take all that data, they accumulate it, and suffice it to say that this black diamond on the bottom, if it falls on one side of the, of the single line versus the other without crossing it, that means that there's a statistical benefit for the um, particular intervention, and here you can see we have a favors placebo or favors scheduled. So we'll just walk through these various outcomes of interest that basically address all of the points that Dr. Shea brought up. So outcome one, self-reported potency. So this is what the patients are actually telling us. We look here that um, first off, the black diamond does in fact cross the, the vertical line, and when we look at the statistical significance of this, it was insignificant with a p-value of 0 0.27. So self-reported potency, that one favors um, no intervention. Short-term erectile function, so getting back to something reasonable, functional early on. Again, we can see looking at these studies that um, do include a fair number of patients, almost 700 patients, that no significant benefit derived from adding on a PDE5 inhibitor. This is going to be a little bit like Groundhog Day. Now we look at erectile function domains, or the IIEF that everybody here is familiar with. Once again, we see, and, and the wider these diamonds get, that means that we have less and less confidence in the conclusions that are drawn. No significant improvement. How about sexual quality of life in the long term? Now this was a big one that was brought up. Now the number of the studies that actually address this, because as Dr. Shea acknowledges, the short term is relatively small. This long-term quality of life is, is a very wide, and, and the p-value is 0 0.5. So, so no statistical improvement in long-term sexual quality of life. And actually just kind of questioning the integrity of the data, now we look at the serious adverse events. So this is the one um, intervention that was actually statistically significant, and oddly enough, it favors scheduled. So if we sit and think about this, by giving somebody actual a PD-5 inhibitor versus a placebo, we have a higher adverse event profile in the, in the patients receiving placebo. So these, you know, when you go to the time that these, these studies were being conducted back in the early 2000s, this is before PD-5 inhibitors were generic. There was a lot of money in this. Many of these studies were done with heavy, heavy industry support. And I just draw this to your attention to, to really question, huh, can I really believe what's reported in these various studies? So as it pertains, when we look at the whole kind of constellation of outcomes that have been investigated, in my opinion, there's really no, no role for PD-5 inhibitors. So the, the investigators and industry, for that matter, they got a little bit intelligent. They said, well, let's not look at just daily PD-5 inhibitors. What about on-demand inhibitors? So prior to planned sexual activity, let's give patients treatment dose PD-5 inhibitors. And we'll, we'll kind of walk through these again. I don't think you could line up these diamonds anymore on the vertical lines if you wanted with some p-values that are fairly impressive, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. In my uh, opinion, as a researcher, these types of p-values are actually kind of hard to come by. Again, we look at erectile function domains. We look at self-reported potency in the long term. 
nothing statistically significant in any of these departments. It's a, um, it's a recurring theme, long-term adverse events, wide, wide confidence intervals, very, very little ability to take these data seriously. And uh, even if we did, none of them support that they scheduled versus on-demand uh, PD-5 program is beneficial to patients. So when we compare scheduled versus on-demand, again, no real data supporting the use of uh, this type of intensive penile rehab. So, okay, let's just say that there's not any compelling data. What else can we do from these patients? This is an unmet need. You know, about 70% of our patients are going to be contending with this in some form or fashion. What about intracavernosal injection therapy? So I really had to go back to the archives to look at this, back to 1999, and um, small study, randomized study, 30 patients. Half of them, they got alprostadil three times a week for 12 weeks. The other half got no intervention. And we look at how these patients did, did. Of the 12 out of 15 patients that actually completed their ICI program, um, eight of them were able to achieve erections. Importantly, 13% of them had a complication rate, but when you looked at the total group of patients that did ICI and compared to those that received um, no intervention, ultimately the benefit was fairly modest. Five out of 15 patients in the ICI group did benefit from the ICI, and there were some substantial complications, including uh, prolonged priapism, bruising, and visits to the ED. So in my opinion, when it, uh, when it comes to ICI, there's really insufficient evidence, very small-scale studies. You really do require extreme patient motivation, and the patients have to kind of know what they're signing up for and understand the complication profile. So let's look at something slightly less inter intensive. And vacuum erection devices might be a particular um, area that, that could help fill this gap. The data quality is relatively low, but this is a retrospective study from New York, about 200 patients looking at some combination of PDE5 inhibitors, vacuum erection devices, or no penile rehab. And when they looked at the rates of erection, erection recovery um, following surgery, and stratified based on the patient's sexual health inventory men score going into this, suffice it to say that there was a slight inclination that combination vacuum erection devices plus PD-5 inhibitors may be beneficial to patients. And they did, in fact, see that this led to the highest and quickest rates of erectile recovery. So <clears throat> as we conclude, um, a critical review of the evidence does not support PD-5 scheduled therapy. It does not support scheduled versus over on-demand therapy. There's really insufficient data for intracavernosal infections and low quality data suggesting that maybe vacuum erection devices plus PD-5 inhibitors may be useful. So when I kind of think about it, give the patient some time, otherwise send them over to Dr. Shea to do his thing. Thank you for your attention.